Hi there, uh, my name is Mr Evans, this video is on the optimal resource mix. So we've worked through uh, most of this now um, and we're at uh, this part of the specification, the mix of resources should include an understanding of labour and capital intensive processes. So the optimal resource mix is the combination of resources, uh, the combination of production resources that best enables a business to achieve their corporate objectives. So in other words, uh, the business has got to decide how much labour, how much capital we're going to employ, which uh, natural resources we're going to use um, to enable us to achieve our corporate objectives. The sort of things we might consider, uh, what's the cost um, of maybe installing new machinery, building a new plant, uh, what will be the impact on the quality of our product, what's our brand image. Um, and there will be a uh, choice to a certain extent between whether the business um, spends the majority of its production costs on human imports, on labour, or on machinery, on capital. So when a business chooses to uh, spend the majority of their production costs on human inputs to the production process, that's known as labour intensive production. Um, products that are produced uh, and the biggest cost for that business is the wages of the employees who are making them. So examples of this might be uh, kind of uh, fine tailoring, wedding dresses and uh, suits etc. Um, Hairdressing, personal training, if you've got a personal trainer that um, uh, you know, they might not be using gym equipment and the money is going to them. Uh, and financial services, banking, insurance. Uh, the uh, employees in those industries can, can demand huge wages. Um, so, the pros of labour intensive production. Each product can be adjusted to suit the needs of the customer. Uh, we don't need, you know, if, the, if there's a, a skilled human making the product, they can uh, change for each uh, customer. Just think about when you go and get a haircut, they don't give every haircut the same. They'll listen to what you want and um, try and match your needs. Uh, the work tends to be quite varied, uh, which can improve motivation. As every product you're making might be unique, um, that should help to keep the job interesting. Um, customer satisfaction levels should be high if the um, uh, product is tailor-made and exactly meets the consumer's needs. And uh, workers' ideas can be used to improve the production process. All right, if we uh, use capital-intensive production, where we get rid of workers, and we, not all of them, but we spend uh, a lot of money on machinery. Machines don't come up with ideas. Um, this links back into that idea of Kaizen, getting the workforce to come up with um, ideas. On the other hand, highly skilled workers uh, may demand high wages. Um, uh, there can be a training cost and uh, the time taken to train workers up to the required skill level can be considerable. Um, and there are difficulties recruiting at the right skill level. Uh, you know, it can be sometimes very difficult to find a business and economics teacher. Uh, and um, So, yeah, uh, teaching is an example of an industry that's very labour intensive. The majority of a school's budget tends to be spent on uh, its teachers. Capital intensive production, on the other hand, occurs when the majority of the firm's production costs are spent on, spent on technological inputs to the production process. So we're talking about production lines here, factories uh, with a highly automated production line, um, producing cars, canned goods, um, high-tech uh, products um, such as computers, laptops tend to be um, fairly capital intensive, pharmaceuticals, uh, industries uh, like that. So, uh, what are the benefits of capital intensive production? Well, if machines are making it, the, the process can be 
standardized and the products are made consistently at the same standard, uh, which can be helpful for mass-produced goods. Um, they, they will be made at a higher output, um, which can lead to economies of scale. We can bulk buy our um, materials for, for that because the production occurs uh, at a very fast rate. Um, and it's useful for mass production, mass customization, whereas the uh, so mass production, flow production, it's also known as uh, where products are produced continually on a production line, as opposed to labor intensive production, which may be more suitable for uh, job type production, where each product is a one off. The cons of capital intensive production are that there are set up and maintenance costs, high setup and maintenance costs for a, a factory, etc. There may be a lack of innovation. Um, I've mentioned this before. Some machines don't come up with ideas, people do. Um, and it can be expensive to change uh, the production line if you want to uh, produce a new product or produce variations, for example, switching the production line to move from producing red paint to producing green paint may involve, you know, half a day or a day of uh, adjusting the machinery um, so that it's cleaned and the next batch of paint uh, comes out in the colour that you want it to. So what will our considerations be when we're choosing our optimal resource mix? Well, we'll have to consider the nature of the product, our budget, how much money do we have to spend, uh, what, our consumer, uh, what our consumers would prefer, um, do they want high quality handmade goods or are they happy with a, a low cost, low, uh, you know, economically produced uh, standardised product. Uh, what's our brand image? Um, you know, are we aiming at top end, you know, uh, unique products or are we a mass uh, producing company? And the industrial relations, do we have good relationships with our workers? All of those things will be considered by a firm when it's trying to set the optimal resource mix.